Radio. And um, next to me is Jason Ritchie, who was uh, on his way to his next gig in Holland, our small tour in a couple of weeks, and he played yesterday in Belgium. He's now uh, on the way at Hengelo, and in between there was a little museum called the Muse, and it's, uh, it has harmonica museums and uh, a lot of uh, blues harps and a lot of harps, and he was a kid in a candy store. Yeah, completely. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. Um, first of all, Jason, how came your love with the instrument? Um, I just, it was by accident, you know what I mean? I just fell into it because it's cheap and affordable and I wanted to do something besides sing and so I just, it just happened, you know? And then I, I guess I didn't really fall in love with it until I had been playing it for like, I, I don't know, maybe I loved it right away. I don't know. I can't remember when I really fell in love with it. Influence. I, lo I read in the bio that Pat Ramsey was a great influence of you and he, I saw he passed away last uh, November. Um, can you explain what he meant to you? more than any any harmonica player for you than yeah. anybody else now sure i can try um it's like uh i was like i uh, really just completely focused on little walter and sunny boy and george monica smith and players like that you know and uh th th those guys are awesome um and most of the players today um, are based on those guys and the players that weren't based on those guys they were playing a lot of notes and really fast but it didn't sound very bluesy okay um and um, without naming any names, you know, there was a lot of guys that could play fast, but none that sounded really uh, like they had a set of balls, you know what I mean? And, and I went to Memphis and uh, <clears throat> I wandered upon a gig and Pat eventually got up and played. And uh, that was the first time that I ever heard anybody play fast uh, that, and it still sounded bluesy. He was using a lot of blues notes and stuff and it was very methodical and uh, it was composed of a lot of scales and a lot of thought and sounded much more like a guitar player than a approach. Not like it sounded like a guitar, I mean it sounded like a harp, but you know, with the approach to playing was more musical, I, I think, you know what I mean, than just like taking a lick and saying here's a Sonny Boy lick or here's a George Smith lick. This was more of a way of thinking, not a way of playing harmonica. Even though it's Pat, okay, it was more of a way of thinking about playing harmonica. And um, so, even today, like, I completely sound different than Pat for most of the time. Sometimes it's still pretty close, but, like, um, the skeletal structure of what makes me, me, ultimately is 100% Pat Ramsey. saw one of them, we saw a couple of them, is that uh, Jason Ritchie who wants to teach anybody else the love of the, this instrument, yeah. the blues harp. Yeah, it's just, I love making them because it's fun, you know what I mean, and, and it gets people to come to the shows too, so it, it wins for me, you know, And uh, but I do, I've always loved teaching, and I, I started teaching way before I was good enough to start teaching, you know what I mean, and I, I was like only playing four years and I was showing people, you know, how to play. And uh, and you learn so much about that, is you know about playing when you teach. You know, so. you organize the harmonica blowouts in uh, back in the states. Do you still do that? Now? Yeah, I only do that once a year for spa, and then I and then I do some instructional seminars, like weekend three day um, events where people fly in. But uh, I'm doing less and less of that because I organizationally it's such a challenge and more or less I really just prefer performing you know I mean I love teaching but performing is where it's at for now anyway you know maybe later on. And, well, it blew the, all of the audience uh, away. And how you felt afterwards? I saw you uh, backstage, head on, and... 
don't want to talk to anybody, just enjoy the, the, the good result of the show. Yes. Well, um, sometimes depending upon the show, like um, I have like a different emotional reaction afterwards, like because all kinds of things can happen on stage because like um, you become like a conduit for um, energy and um, sometimes it's really good energy and sometimes it's bad energy. And, um, and I'm not talking about the audience or the people, I'm talking about spiritual forces, at least for me, this is just what I believe. And sometimes, even though the negative energy can make really good music, afterwards it, um, it hurts a lot. It takes like all the, the life out of you and I don't really want to talk to anybody after it happens because I feel um, empty, yeah. Was it eventually a good experience or a bad yeah, experience? I loved Ospel. That was a really good gig for me. There was a lot of even energy. It was both of positive and negative energy. I mean, there's really no difference. So much emotion in it, like the last song on your last uh, song, um, your last CD, Black no, uh, Broken Toy. Yeah. yeah. That's not singing, it's it's whining in, 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 the, in the microphone and, and so much power in the lyrics also. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, do you feel everyone every time you sing the same emotion again on the stage? On that song, I do. Yeah, I, I hope it continues that way. But yeah, I like to sing that song at people. You know what I mean? And so like that's how I do it um, because uh, it's therapy. It's a therapeutic number. If I could only write 20 more like that, I'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could you could see in the song there's there's so much anger and and, and hurts coming out then. That song was actually, um, I, I wrote it, but I didn't write it. I um, channeled that. I mean, it was like automatic writing. I didn't even think about it. So, yeah, that's, and that's another one of those situations where after you do something, it's like, whoa, we got the energy comes through. Like, I, I look at the song and I look at the lyrics, and there's a lot of other meanings that I didn't even intend that, that, can, be, that can be read into it, especially if you like research the history of, of certain things that I'm into that I didn't even know that that when I wrote it that it uh, it's really very strange yeah there's some strange things Strange um, song names like uh, Dicker Hex of Conic, the 12 sided Jack pyramid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, 12 sided pyramid. Yeah. Is that going to symbols? Yeah, sure. That's what you said last time. With it. Yeah. How do you put that in a creative process in writing a song? Well, it, it, it just overcomes me. And I have to write about it. Yeah, it's like, um, I don't have no other. There's, it's whatever moves some people, you know, it's like a boy and a girl or, you know, and a love song and they and they feel like they have to write it. For me, you know what I mean? A lot of it is just ancient religion and the, theosophical study. You know, not philosophical, theosophical. The study of every kind of religion and things like that that really moves me. I, what, whatever people believe in, it gets a lot of power and energy, no matter what it is, whether it's Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad or anything. And so when you read the writings of people that are really in, inspired by those things, it's really moving. And you can, you can, and if, and if you have something that inspires you, it becomes an obsession. You know, I become, I'm obsessed with, um, with those kind of subjects. You know what I mean? I mean, I know more about Christianity and I'm not a Christian than a almost any Christians I know. I can challenge them at their own game, quote scripture, you know, anytime, and you know what I mean, and uh, because I love it, you know what I mean. I love it more than they do because I I want to understand it, not just believe it. I want to understand. What, it. You want to discuss with them uh, and on their own turf. Yeah. Well, I don't talk to them. You know, most Christians you can't talk to. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. Some there's some are really cool. You know what I mean, but they're they're far and few between.